where do we get marriage wrong? Like, I don't even know if most, most men even know, like, the purpose of getting married, like what we're looking for. Are we confused half the time when we're getting married? Yes, to be fair and honest, um, both sexes <laughs> tend to fall in love with the members of the other sex who yeah. are the uh, who are often opposites and and often the least capable of loving them. Uh, so men fall in love with beautiful younger women who are less mature uh, than they are and end up um, being very highly you know look up, looking up to the man at the beginning and. We feel really proud and approved of and so on. Uh, but then it turns out that uh, the, we're a little bit disgusted at their lack of maturity and they're disgusted at, at our uh, propensity for dominating and um, and having all the answers. And the more mature she becomes, the more she wants to have an equality in the relationship, which was different from the dynamic that attracted the two of them. But there's a, there's a lot of bigger issues that often happen here too. So in the Jeff Bezos case, I don't know the situation personally, but normally speaking, or very frequently, as a sort of model, um, the uh, the woman will initially be attracted to a man who is very successful, powerful, um, confident in himself, able to be uh, has a sense of efficacy, um, and so, um, but she doesn't realize that it's ex um, but that it's exactly those characteristics that will lead to their divorce. Here's why. So. Um, what both sexes have an equal need for is a need to feel heard and understood. But as the male um, uh, who is successful becomes more and more successful, he often learns a series of behaviors that, are, uh, that, are, that help him become successful at work that is, are exactly the behaviors that lead him to be unsuccessful in love. So for example, let's say you're a CEO and you're looking for um, a, a, a new type of plane and you get um, a salesperson trying to sell you a special engine um, that they have for a new plane that, will, that they say will be perfect for you. Well, as, as a CEO, you're listening to that um, salesperson speak and you're thinking to yourself, okay, is this salesperson as um, convincing as another salesperson I had before? And should I also interview somebody else? Uh, will this work for my Chinese market? Uh, will this work for these infrastructure that I already have set up for my Chinese market? Uh, will this, um, you know, and, and is asking a hundred questions like this while the person is talking. Um, and so th that person, the, a good CEO has learned to self-listen um, to, to be juggling the listening process with the, um, with the yes, but process or what about process and the cross-examination process. That skill set for the good CEO becomes so ingrained that when he takes that, that skill set home, and by the way, this can sometimes be happen to women as well, um, not as frequently, but I'll explain why both frequently and not frequently. So the, the male sales, uh, the male CEO comes home and his wife says, you know, I've had a really difficult day at work or I've had a dif difficult yeah. day with the children or something's happened in the family. And, um, and the, the male sees his wife, the woman he loves, the woman he'd probably die for, um, to, is having a problem. And so our instinct when our wife is having a problem is to, while she's talking, to figure out a solution. Because instinctively, when our wife, who I, we love, is bleeding to death, the only way to handle that is to solve the problem, to get the band-aids on her quickly, to get it to the emergency room quickly. And so um, we, we're, we're behaving with our wife in a way that is looking for the solution while she's talking. Very few CEOs or top level entrepreneurs realize that there is a solution for your wife's complaints and challenges, and that is to listen. Not only listen by keeping your mouth shut, but also listen by when she's finished the complaining, not coming up with a solution, but rather saying, so sweetie, what I heard you say was, was this is, and then asking, is that accurate? And then if she says, no, actually it's mostly accurate. Thank you for listening. But I, I think you got this wrong. Not saying, no, no, I said that. Uh, not becoming defensive about what she feels we got wrong, but being right in there saying, so it's not what I said, but it's this, is that correct? And then she goes, yes, that's correct. Okay, did I miss anything in uh, understanding what you're saying? Um, yes, I think you miss this. No, 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 I think I got that. I said that because this, no, shut your mouth, listen, 
work on what she, she feels you missed because the only thing that counts is what she feels that you've missed. And then when she begins to feel safe because you didn't distort anything and you didn't miss anything, say, is there anything new that you'd like to add? That leads to a woman, or when a woman does the same thing for a man in reverse, that leads to your partner feeling heard. But the great majority of men move to fixing the problem as opposed to understanding that you can fix the problem by not fixing the problem. The fixing of the problem is the listening process. Hearing um, and then letting your wife or your daughter or your son um, say, here's what I heard you say, son, daughter, wife, uh, mom, dad, um, and then mom and dad, daughter, wife, uh, fee, son feels really heard. And then did I, and being open to anything you distorted, open to anything that you missed. And so this is what I teach in my couples communication courses in much greater depth than I've explained here. And invariably, one of the men in the course will say, well, no, I'm not really fixing it then. I'm not really attending to the, her, her real needs. She's hurting. Why am I not solving the problem for her? And I have to work with him in hearing the listening process in the way I just described it is the solution. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.